Part two of Chapter One of Stories of Animal Sagacity. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. This reading by Allison Hester of Athens, Georgia. Stories of Animal Sagacity by W. H. G. Kingston. Part two of Chapter One Cats. The Cat and the puppies. I have a longer story than the last to tell of a cat which undertook the nursing of some puppies while she already had some kittens of her own. It happened that her mistress possessed a valuable little black spaniel which had a litter of five puppies. As these were too many for the spaniel to bring up, and the mistress was anxious to have them all preserved, it was proposed that they should be brought up by hand. The cook, to whom the proposal was made, suggested that this would be a difficult undertaking, but as the cat had lately kittened, some of the puppies might be given to her to bring up. Two of the kittens were accordingly taken away, and the same number of puppies substituted. What Puss thought of the matter has not transpired, or whether she even discovered the trick that had been played on her. But be that as it may, she immediately began to bestow the same care on the little changelings as she had done on her own offspring, and in a fortnight they were as forward and playful as kittens would have been, gamboling about and barking lustily, while the three puppies nursed by their own mother were whining and rolling about in the most helpless fashion. Puss had proved a better nurse than the little spaniel. She gave them her tail to play with and kept them always in motion and amused, so that they ate meat and were strong enough to be removed and to take care of themselves long before their brothers and sisters. On their being taken away from her, their poor nurse showed her sorrow and went prowling about the house, looking for them in every direction. At length, she caught sight of the spaniel and the three remaining puppies. Instantly, up went her back, her bristles stood erect, and her eyes glared fiercely at the little dog, which she supposed had carried off her young charges. Ho, ho, you vile thief, who have a venture to rob me of my young ones. I have found you at last, she exclaimed. At least, she thought as much, if she did not say it. The spaniel barked defiance, answering, they are my own puppies. You know they are as unlike as possible to your little, tiresome, frisky mewlings. I tell you I know them to be mine, cried Puss, spitting and hissing. I mean to recover my own. And before the spaniel knew what was going to happen, Puss sprang forward and seized one of the puppies and carried it off to her own bed in another part of the premises. Not content with this success, as soon as she had safely deposited the puppy in her home, she returned to the abode of the spaniel. This time, she simply dashed forward as if she had made up her mind what to do, knocked over the spaniel with her paw, seized another puppy in her mouth, and carrying it off, placed it alongside the first she had captured. She was now content. Two puppies she had lost, two she had obtained. Whether or not she thought them the same which had been taken from her, it is difficult to say. At all events, she nursed the two latter with the same tender care as the first. Copy playful pussy when you have charge of little children. They enjoy games of romps as much as young puppies do, and will be far happier and thrive better than when compelled to loll about by themselves while you sit at your book or work in silent dignity and indifference to their requirements, however fond you may be of them, as was, I dare say, the mother spaniel of her pups. End of The Cat and the Puppies The Cat and the Burglars No stronger evidence of the sagacity of the cat is to be found than an instance narrated to me by my friend Mrs. F., and for which I can vouch. A lady, Miss P., who was a governess in her family, had previously held the same position in that of Lord Blank in Ireland. While there, a cat became very strongly attached to her. 
though allowed to enter the schoolroom and dining room where she was fed and petted the animal never came into the lady's bedroom nor was she indeed accustomed to go into that part of the house at any time one night however after retiring to rest miss p was disturbed by the gentle but incessant mewing of the cat at her bedroom door at first she was not inclined to pay attention to the cat's behavior but the perseverance of the animal and a peculiarity in the tones of her voice at length induced her to open the door the cat on this bounded forward and circled round her rapidly looking up in her face mewing expressively miss p thinking that the cat had only taken a fancy to pay her a visit refastened the door intending to let her remain in the room but this did not appear to please miss pussy at all she sprang back to the door mewing more loudly than before then she came again to the lady and then went to the door as if asking her to follow what is it you want exclaimed miss p well go away if you do not wish to stay and she opened the door but the cat instead of going recommenced running to and fro between the door and her friend continuing to mew as she looked up into her face miss p s attention was now attracted by a peculiar noise as if proceeding from the outside of one of the windows on the ground floor a few moments more convinced her that some persons were attempting to force an entrance instantly throwing a shawl around her she hurried along the passage the cat gliding by her side purring now in evident contentment to lord blank's bedroom door where her knock was quickly answered and an explanation given the household was soon aroused bells were rung lights fitted about servants hurried here and there and persons watching from the windows distinctly saw several men making off with all speed scrambling over an adjacent wall it was undoubtedly owing to the sagacity of the cat that the mansion was preserved from midnight robbery and the inmates probably from some fearful outrage she must have reasoned that the intruders had no business there whilst her reason and affection combined induced her to warn her best friend of the threatened danger she may have feared also that any one else in the house would have driven her heedlessly away my dear reader may we not believe that this reasoning power was given to the dumb animal for the protection of the family against evil doers i might give you many instances of beneficent purposes being carried out by equally simple and apparently humble agencies let us then learn always to treat dumb animals with kindness and consideration since they are so often given to us as companions for our benefits like the cat you may by vigilance be of essential service to others more powerful than yourself for the same reason never despise the good will or warnings of even the most humble end of the cat and the burglars the cat which rang the bell i have heard of another cat who had she lived in lord blank's house when attacked by robbers might very speedily have aroused the family this cat however lived in a nunnery in france she had observed that when a certain bell was rung all the inmates assembled for their meals when she also received her food one day she was shut up in a room by herself when she heard the bell ring in vain she attempted to get out she could not open the door the window was too high to reach at length after some hours imprisonment the door was opened off she hurried to the place where she expected to find her dinner but none was there she was very hungry and hunger is said to sharpen the wits she knew where the rope hung which pulled the bell in the belfry now when that bell rings i generally get my supper she thought as she ran towards the rope it hung down temptingly within her reach a good thick rope she sprang upon it it gave a pleasant tinkle she jerked harder and harder and the bell rang louder and louder now i shall get my supper though i have lost my dinner she thought as she pulled away the nuns hearing the bell ring at so unusual an hour came hurrying into the belfry wondering what was the matter when what was their surprise to see the cat turned bell ringer 
They puzzled their heads for some time, till the lay sister, who generally gave the cat her meals, recollected that she had not been present at dinner time, and thus the mystery was solved, and Pussy rewarded for her exertions by having her supper brought to her without delay. Instead of sitting down and crying when in a difficulty, think, like sensible Pussy, of the best way to get out of it. In lieu of wringing your hands, ring the bell. End of the cat which rang the bell. The affectionate cat that could measure time. The last story reminds me of Mrs. F.'s account of the cat in the knocker. That same intelligent little cat was also one of the most affectionate of her race. Her young mistress used to go to school for a few hours daily in the neighboring town. Pussy would every morning sally forth with her and bound along beside her pony as far as the gate, then going quietly back to the house. Regularly, however, at the time the little girl was expected to return, the faithful pet might be seen watching about the door, and if Missy were delayed longer than usual, would extend her walk to the gate, there awaiting her approach, and evincing her delight by joyful gambols as soon as she described her coming along the road. Pussy would then hurry back to the house door, that she might give notice of her young mistress's return, and the moment she alighted would welcome her with happy purrings and caresses. Endeavor to be as regular in all your ways as my friend's cat. Never keep your friends waiting for you, but rather wait for them. Show your affection and wish to please in this as in other ways. Thank Pussy for the excellent example she has set you. End of the Affectionate Cat That Could Measure Time The Cat and the Prisoner While speaking of the affection of cats, I must not forget to mention a notable example of it shown by the favorite cat of a young nobleman in the days of Queen Elizabeth. For some political offense, he had been shut up in prison, and had long pined in solitude when he was startled by hearing a slight noise in the chimney. On looking up, great was his surprise and delight to see his favorite cat bound over the hearth towards him, purring joyfully at the meeting. She had probably been shut up for some time before she had made her escape and then she must have sought her master, traversing miles of steep and slippery roofs, along dangerous parapets, and through forests of chimney stacks, urged on by the strength of her attachment, and guided by a mysterious instinct, till she discovered the funnel which led to his prison chamber. Certainly it was not by chance she had made the discovery, nor was it exactly reason that conducted her to the spot. By whatever means she found it, we must regard the affectionate little creature as the very blondel of cats. Never spare trouble or exertion to serve a friend, or to please those you are bound to please. Remember the prisoner's cat. End of the Cat and the Prisoner The Cat and the Hawk Cats often show great courage especially in defense of their young. A cat had led her kittens out into the sunshine, and while they were frisking around her, they were espied by a hawk soaring overhead. Down pounced the bird of prey and seized one in his talons. Encumbered by the weight of the fat little creature, he was unable to rise again before the mother cat had discovered what occurred. With a bound, she fiercely attacked the marauder and compelled him to drop her kitten in order to defend himself. A regular combat now commenced, the hawk fighting with beak and talons and rising occasionally on his wings. It seemed likely that he would thus gain the victory. Still more when he struck his sharp beak into one of Pussy's eyes while he tore her ears into shreds with his talons, at length, however, she managed what had been from the first her aim, to break one of her adversary's wings. She now sprang on him with renewed fury, and seizing him by the neck, quickly tore off his head. This done, regardless of her own sufferings, she began to lick the bleeding wounds of her kitten, 
and then, calling to its brothers and sisters, she carried it back to their secure home. You will find many hawks with which you must do battle. The fiercest and most dangerous are those you must encounter every day. Huge, dark-winged birds of prey, passionate temper, hatred, discontent, jealousy, an ugly list. I will not go on with it. Fight against them as bravely as Pussy fought the hawk, which tried to carry off her kitten. End of The Cat and the Hawk the benevolent cat that we must attribute to cats the estimable virtue of benevolence mrs f gives me two anecdotes to prove a lady in the south of ireland having lost a pet cat and searched for it in vain after four days was delighted to hear that it had returned hastening to welcome the truant with a wassail bowl of warm milk in the kitchen she observed another cat skulking with the timidity of an uninvited guest in an obscure corner. The pet cat received the caresses of its mistress with its usual pleasure, but though it circled round the bowl of milk with grateful purrings, it declined to drink, going up to the stranger instead, whom, with varied mewings, like man's own speech, it prevailed on to quit the shadowy background and approach the tempting food. At length, both came up to the bowl. When the thirsty stranger feasted to its full satisfaction, while the cat of the house stood by in evident satisfaction watching its guest, and not until it would take no more, could the host be persuaded to wet its whiskers in the tempting beverage. Ever think of others before yourself. Attend first to their wants. Do not be outdone in true courtesy by a cat. End of the Benevolent Cat The Cat and Her Many Guests Mrs. F. vouches for the following account, showing the hospitable disposition of cats. It was given to her by a clergyman who had it direct from a friend. A gentleman in Australia had a pet cat to which he daily gave a plate of viands with his own hands. The allowance was liberal, and there was always a remainder. But after some time, the gentleman perceived that another cat came to share the repast. Finding that this occurred for several consecutive days, he increased the allowance. It was then found to be too much for two. There was again a residue for several days, when a third cat was brought in to share the feast. Amused at this proceeding, the gentleman now began to experiment, and again increased the daily dole of food. A fourth guest now appeared, and he continued adding gradually to the allowance of viands and found that the number of feline guests also progressively increased, until about thirty were assembled, after which no further additions took place, so that he concluded that all those who lived within visiting distance were included. Indeed, the wonder was that so many could assemble as the district he lived in was far from populous. The stranger cats always decorously departed after dinner was over, leaving their hospitable entertainer, no doubt, with such grateful demonstrations as might be dictated by the feline code of etiquette. Ask yourselves if you are always as anxious as was the Australian cat to invite your companions to enjoy with you the good things you have given you by kind friends. Ah, what an important lesson we may learn from this anecdote. Always to think of others before ourselves. When young friends visit you, do you try your utmost to entertain them, thinking of their comfort before your own? Such is the lesson taught us by this cat, which gathered others of her kind to share the bounties provided by her kind master. End of the cat and her many guests. The dishonest cat. I am sorry to say that cats are not always so amiable as those I have described, but will occasionally play all sorts of tricks, like some dishonest boys and girls, to obtain what they want. An Angora cat, which lived in a large establishment in France, had discovered that when a certain bell rang, the cook always left the kitchen. Numerous niceties were scattered about some on the tables and dressers, others before the fire. 
Pussy crept towards them and tasted them, and they exactly suited her palate. When she heard the cook's step returning, off she ran to a corner and pretended to be sleeping soundly. How she longed that the bell would ring again. At last, like another cat I have mentioned, she thought that she would try to ring it herself and get cook out of the way. She could resist her longing for those sweet creams no longer. Off she crept, jumped up at the bell rope, and succeeded in sounding the bell. Away, hurried cook to answer it. The coast was now clear, and pussy reveled in the delicacies left unguarded, being out of the kitchen, or apparently asleep in her corner, before cook returned. This trick continued to answer pussy's object for some time, the cook wondering what had become of her tarts and creams, till a watch was wisely set to discover the thief, when the dishonest, though sagacious cat, was seen to pull the bell, and then, when cook went out, to steal into the kitchen and feast at her leisure. There is a proverb, which pray condemn as a bad one, because the motive offered is wrong, that honesty is the best policy. Rather say, be honest because it is right. Pussy, with her maneuvers to steal the creams, thought herself very clever, but she was found out. End of the Dishonest Cat Pussy and the Cream Jug I must now tell you of another cat which was a sad thief and showed a considerable amount of sagacity in obtaining what she wanted. One day, she found a cream jug on the breakfast table, full of cream. It was tall and had a narrow mouth. She longed for the nice, rich contents, but could not reach the cream even with her tongue. If she upset the jug, her theft would be discovered. At last, she thought to herself, I may put in my paw, though I cannot get in my head, and some of that nice stuff will stick to it. She made the experiment and found it answered. Licking her paw as often as she drew it out, she soon emptied the jug, so that when the family came down, they had no cream for breakfast. A few drops on the tablecloth, however, showed how it had been stolen. Pussy, like human beings who commit dishonest actions, not being quite so clever as she probably thought herself. End of Pussy and the Cream Jug the Revengeful Cat Cats often show that they possess some of the vices as well as some of the virtues of human beings. The Tom Cat is frequently fierce, treacherous, and vindictive, and at no time can his humor be crossed with impunity. Mrs. F. mentioned several instances of this. A person she knew in the south of Ireland had severely chastised his cat for some misdemeanor, when the creature immediately ran off and could not be found. Some days afterwards, as this person was going from home, what should he see in the center of a narrow path between walls but his cat, with its back up, its eyeballs glaring, and a wicked expression in its countenance? Expecting to frighten off the creature, he slashed at it with his handkerchief when it sprang at him with a fierce hiss, and, seizing his hand in its mouth, held on so tightly that he was unable to beat it off. He hastened home, nearly fainting with the agony he endured, and not till the creature's body was cut from the head could the mangled hand be extricated. An Irish gentleman had an only son, quite a little boy, who, being without playmates, was allowed to have a number of cats sleeping in his room. One day, the boy beat the father of the family for some offense, and when he was asleep at night, the revengeful beast seized him by the throat and might have killed him had not instant help been at hand. The cat sprang from the window and was no more seen. If you are always gentle and kind, you will never arouse anger or revenge. It may be aroused in the breast of the most harmless-looking creatures and the most contemptible. Your motive, however, for acting gently and lovingly should be not fear of the consequences of a contrary behavior, but that the former is right. End of The Revengeful Cat End of Part 2 of Chapter 1
of stories of animal sagacity.